what's up and welcome to How to Become a Terrible Person, the only podcast on the internet helping you become the best, worst, worst person, person possible. possible. I'm joined, as always, by my friend Ashley Flitter. What's up? Search for her on all the social medias. I am at Pomo and Kitch. We have a telephone number here, 910-557-2871. Still don't know it. You don't know it? No. I think people are taking bets of how long it's going to take me to memorize it. It's weird because <laughs> I, I hope you went for the long game. People say I say it a lot, but then they're telling me that while they're texting the text lines. So it's working. 910-557-2871. And Ashley, we have one rule on this podcast. You forgot it today. I d- again, I again. forget this thing every time. <laughs> if he doesn't forget it, that's it's weird. You send us a, a problem, a dilemma, an issue. We mull it over. We talk about it. And whether we answer it, whether we don't. <laughs> on the day <laughs> and almost spill your water all over a very expensive <laughs> you electrocute us and then we die ashley yeah i i think there's no sense fiddle farting around wait we're just jumping right into it i think so oh damn i mean okay. do you have anything you want to talk about from last week no because i'm starving and you don't let me exactly for this so I, I don't get to eat till i done. i in full disclosure to everyone listening I was very sick yesterday. Not like flu sick, but something I ate, something. Uh, he he seemed fine to me. I feel like he's making this up. I was dying the moment I got home. Like, on the way home, it got rough. That's the worst yeah. when you're driving home and it hits you. Oh, I've had that before. So, we record, we're recording the podcast a little earlier today just to get it out of the way. To so make Grant sure. can go poop his brains and out. Make, and make sure I can edit it in time. I there's, told you, lay off the celery juice. There's, I'm not taking, I haven't taken celery juice. Celery. Celery. celery S-U-L-L-E-R-Y. Yes. Celery. <laughs> celery. <laughs> um, I haven't been doing the celery juice. Maybe that's why your stomach's like, where's my celery? <laughs> I, I think I can pinpoint exactly what it was. But so I don't. So it is something you ate? Yeah, and I don't really want to say what it was. Oh my God, it's it not was. as smart ones, is it? Oh, no. Smart ones. We're back on the smart ones. Wow. I was going to say, they would never cross you like that. No, 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 no. Okay. 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 910-557-2871. Shoot us your texts, your dilemmas, your problems. Ashley, let's get into question one. My girlfriend and I have been dating for four months. She has terrible taste in music. She loves new country and nothing else. She seems close-minded and won't even try to listen to anything else. Is this a red flag? Yes. Break up. Break up. I hate country music, and I'm probably going to hate a lot of hate for this, but no. You know, <laughs> I don't hate I don't hate country music, Ashley. I don't I don't listen to new country music. Yeah. I like the old some of the older stuff, like cowboy, like the real outlaw, like that. Oh, I old. can get down to some Dixie Chicks and Toby Keith back in the day. Well, I'm talking like even like yeah, but when remember, it, I'm like 20 years right. younger than you. So. And the thing that happened probably between that Toby Keith era <laughs> and now is hip hop. It's country hip hop and it's garbage. What? No, you, it's pop country. No, but it's it's they're it's stealing pop country like Zed and Marin Morris, the middle <laughs> Florida, George Light and BB Rexa. Fuck. And I like BB Rexa right now. I like BB Rexa. Dan and Shay Tequila. Garbage. I haven't heard. Oh, Dan and Shay. When I taste tequila, when I have I don't even know the words, but it's not good. Just, and they're performing that at the freaking Grammys this weekend. The Grammys are this weekend, and yes. they're performing that. Guess who's presenting an award at the Grammys? BTS. Em. My boys, Mangtan Sonya. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm oh. so proud of them. That means they're coming to America, Grant. They're going to be on the same soil okay. as me. We're going to be breathing the same air, Okay, Grant. before... We're going to be breathing the same air this weekend. Before you explode. That's probably why I'm on one right now, because I'm so excited they're about to be on the same continent. Same continent. Same. You're incontinent. Incontinence is a real problem. <laughs> right. Right. I used to confuse <laughs> no, wait, do you have it? Wait. with competent all the time. <laughs> really? As when I was younger. Yeah. I funny. am incontinent right now. <laughs> You're like, oh, my shit. My mom's like, uh, I think you mean competent. But I was joking before. Taste in music is not grounds to break up with someone. I was totally joking before. I mean, if it's, if it is, it is, if it's an issue to you. I, yeah, I guess, but that's a really low reason to break up with someone because what music they listen to i mean that's kind of weird but think about it this way let's say you're a super christian person and your girlfriend only listens to black metal 
<laughs> but that's different because it goes against your religious beliefs. Right. But Her uh, liking country music and you don't is not because he's a Christian. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's different. Maybe. Is it? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I have you. Has somebody ever told you they like a movie and your opinion of them totally changed? <laughs> No, but I feel like that's happened to me. Like, people find out that I love National Treasure and their opinion of me changes. <laughs> I watched National Treasure with the with the girl I'm about to bring up, actually. Wow. Uh, I, um, okay. So I dated this girl. There's always a... I used to date this girl story yeah. every episode. And we dated for four and a half, five years. Gr- great that's relationship. A long nice girl. Time. We were in... I must have been senior in college-ish. Oh, so 20 years ago. <laughs> I was really into this band, Umphreys McGee. Still am. They're a huge band. And they're huge, but it, the world's such a big place that you've never heard of them, which is totally no, cool. sure haven't. You know, aren't they performing at the McDowell Mountain Music Festival? They might be. I feel like they are. They probably are. They don't come here very often because they so are just... are you going? No. I don't, I don't go see them here because they're all garbage shows. They play stuff for new fans, and mm. I don't... I want to hear deep cuts. Yeah. I want to hear jam band stuff. Oh, gee, I'm freeze. So I took this girl to a weekend of concerts, a residency. It was four nights. That's a lot. And we went to Madison, Wisconsin. We had hotel, great, great venue, great place to stay. And it was really fun Val- over Valentine's Day weekend. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Can you hear me? Was, that was really strange. That was the ghost of my ex-girlfriend <laughs> coming through your microphone. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so we went uh, and we had a really nice time during we got into a couple you know, you get into a fight anytime you travel with your significant other. Just uh, is that a thing? Par for the course. I don't know. I, I we would we would argue, but then oh, there was always probably why you're not <laughs> <laughs> Your mic sounds so good. My today. mic just hates my voice, it's just giving up. Um, um, okay, continue. So I took her to four of these shows, and the moral of the story is she told me when we were breaking up, she was like, I didn't even like them. <gasps> and I was like, fuck you, you did too. So you're making the right choice by breaking up with her. She goes, I didn't even like Humphreys. And I remember that was supposed to hurt me, and it did, because here I've, wow. seen, I've seen this band so many times. Well, she for sure used that to hurt you. Yeah, and I own the drummer's drum kit. I, that's how <laughs> that's into this so band I am. Cool. So if you look up Humphreys McGee, Bonnaroo. You were there. That's my drum kit on stage. Oh, whoa. Which is crazy. And it's also- That fits in your apartment? Like that's what you play with currently? No, that's what I play with Rich. Oh. Yeah. That's my drum kit. The one I refinished. You know when some people buy stuff, they don't use it because they just want to like- Have it. Have it no. and not use it. No, this, ruin it. this is used. Good. You're he, using it. I'm he, sure Umphreys he, McGee would be proud that it's getting its use. Chris Myers, the drummer from Umphreys McGee, loaded it into my car. And Wait, he, his name isn't Umphreys McGee? No. Umphreys, it's Umphrey apostrophe S McGee, like Umphreys McGee. I don't like it. It's a bad band name for sure. They're rad though. Are they like Irish music? No, but they started at Notre Dame in South Bend, Indiana. So it kind of makes sense. That's why you like them. They're local bands from where you're from. No, they're- Is that how you found out about them? Uh, yeah, because it, they were everywhere in high school. I apologize to everyone watching on YouTube right now Ashley that's watching me pick my nose digging. this entire time. She's like, ow. It's allergies. They're still coming for me. So what I realized from taking this girl to this these four concerts, and she told me a couple years later that she didn't even like them. I think it's good to have some common ground in music you like. Right, but it's okay to have music you both Absolutely. don't like. Maybe. I think this guy has got to dig deep and find something they like together so he can focus on that. And then when they're not together, just listen to whatever she doesn't like. Or this guy is like everybody I went to art school with and they're pretentious and lame. And they're like, I only listen to the Smiths first two uh, records. <laughs> if if you're like that guy who just texted the show, get over yourself. <laughs> your girlfriend. <laughs> if your Chances are. A lot of pretty girls like country music. Yeah, and I've heard country concerts yeah. are so fun. I bet they're fun. I personally would never go to one, but I have friends that love country music, and they say it's like the most fun they've ever had. So maybe that'll change your mind, like going to an actual concert. Yeah. Opening or, your mind. It's 2019. Do new experiences. Yeah, or just fall on your sword and deal with it. Right. I will say, when I first started getting into BTS and Korean music, Cody was like, What's what is this shit, Ashley? No, I'm not and listening to this. He, this is weird. he likes EDM and he loves EDM. Like 
Armin Van Buren. Hard house. And Tiesto is his boy. Like, I went to EDC with him. It was life-changing. It was amazing. But he wasn't all into the BTS stuff, which who, you know, it's. It's definitely a niche market. Like, not everyone's going to like listening to music where you don't understand the lyrics. I get it. Totally get it. But flash forward three, four months. Who knows? All the words, all the choreography. He can tell each member apart. He went to the concert with me. And he said it was the best. Now, like, we went to the BTS concert together, and we went to a different, like, just Western artist concert after that. I can't remember who it was. It was like Chris Brown or Post Malone or something like that. And he's like, wow, compared to BTS... These concerts are lame. Like, they're boring compared to the BTS concert. I'm like, thank you. But maybe this guy just needs to go to a concert, see what it's all about, and open in mind. Also, there is nothing There is nothing wrong with quietly hating country music. No, because I, I do it. <laughs> we No, when we work in a cluster of radio oh, stations. When you're walking down the hallway to go to the oh. bathroom and the country music is just blaring. Ugh. It's just, yeah, and it's also, it just seems kind of corny. Right. The whole thing. Right. So it's like when people say they don't like BTS, I get it because I don't like country music. I can't get mad at you for that. But when they say they don't like it just because they can't understand the lyrics and they're Asian. That's such a dumb idea. That's a racist remark. Not like I don't like country music just because I don't like how it sounds to my ears. Which is I go. I know why a lot of people like country music because the lyrics are more real. And relatable, I guess. I don't know. You want to hear something <laughs> hilarious? What? I got super, super stoned the other night. And I have a playlist. That's of, hilarious. I have no, get ready. <laughs> I have a playlist of YouTube videos that I'll put on good headphones, crank everything up nice. so it's loud. I in do my, that with BTS. Yes. And it's, it. it's almost to the point but where- But not high. Not yes, high. Yeah. I'm completely sober. It's almost to the point where it's too loud. <laughs> yeah but i'm stoned i'm just i feel like i'm there and it's not music videos it's live so performances fun. so i have a list of youtube videos that i just go to uh-huh. if i need to feel certain things Me too, for sure i cried and cried like sob natural cry it came upon me and then dropped like a ton of bricks oh my god what was it what was it did you watch Stranger Things? Yes, but that's the first season. Okay, perfect. Do you remember when the boy was being pulled out of the water, dead? Yes. Spoilers. Who cares? <laughs> it was like five years right, ago. Right, and he's not dead. So That song, Peter Gabriel performing Heroes, there's a live version of him with an orchestra where he walks oh out, and then he, when he goes God. to full voice, and he's like, because he's saying, he's basically, sing, the, the lyrics are... Saying we could be heroes in our minds, basically. We could be anything we want to be. You and I. Uh-huh. That's I love and, Peter Gabriel. And he looks like my dad is kind of a better looking version. <laughs> it's really with my I feel like my dad and Peter Gabriel have a similar look. Wow, okay. So I'm watching I'll have to this. Look that up after. And you know, he starts belting it out and the orchestra's going, and there's these bass hits that are huge, and it's wah wah. And every time you just cry. I will just go. Full wow. release. But then sometimes I'll watch a music video that's really cool. Like there's a there's a Rammstein video from back in the day where they're all wearing these. Is that that German yes. band? Yes. They're all wearing they're fat crazy. suits and they're in an airplane hangar getting out of like Rolls Royce limousines. But they're all wearing like <laughs> suits. and But they, you know, dress suits. And then they also have these fat suits underneath it. Okay. And then they have these, these women who are dressed... In like schoolgirl outfits, but they're you know kind of this the the rated X adult version of that. Okay. And they're like giving them food while they're playing the song. It's a heavy metal song. And finally, the keyboardist comes out, and he's been they've been showing him in the limousine sitting by himself, and he comes out and they show him, and he's rolling in on a wheelchair, electric wheelchair, and he's like real skinny and frail. All the other guys are super big, and the breakdown happens, and. It's just him swinging his arm as there's like this heavy ass breakdown while these six fat guys are circled around this one What's guy in a the wheelchair. Point of the video? I don't know, but <laughs> that that image of him rolling up and all of a sudden just hitting hard and the whole band being into it that can make me cry too because it's just it's what? such an execution of an idea that it inspires me to a point where I'm just like my brain can't contain how happy I am yeah, right now. Okay, I just have to cry. 
And I don't get that way with country music. The only two country songs that make me emotional are Dixie Chicks, Landslide, and Travel and Soldier. And I know Dixie Chicks didn't even do originally right. Landslide, but I love their version way better than the Fleetwood Mac you know, version. Do you know the Smashing Pumpkins version of it? I have not heard it's that one. really nice. But those two make me emotional. But I think it's more nostalgia because I would listen to that album on the way to like elementary school with my mom in the car because we would have like a 30 minute drive so i think it's more just like childhood memories than actually really because right. i don't have anyone in my family that went off to war and like died overseas like so the why would travel and soldier make me emotional you know so interesting that is interesting but this guy needs to get over it i yeah. feel if, just- if it's your girlfriend you love her do things with her that make her happy and then she'll do things with you that you like it's like that's what a relationship <laughs> is Stop try. being a jerk. Try. Try it first. And we don't like country music, and we're saying try. Right. Because if Cody was hardcore country lover, I would for sure go to concerts with him just because I want to spend time with him and I love him. You know what I mean? I don't. I don't think I would go to country concerts. No. I mean, I brought him, I dragged, I dragged him along to BTS, <laughs> so I can't really. I dated this girl that cheated on me a whole bunch, and she was into this one band. And I remember I went to go see this band one time, and I was just. You couldn't do it. And they were a heavy band. And then I, I just yawning, I'm so sorry. No, it's fine. They <laughs> I got to a point with this girl where I, I just was like, I don't wanna know how you are in and public that's okay. around these people. That is okay. That means you weren't meant to be. Yeah. That's okay. Well and also she cheated on me like And that 30 also times. means you weren't meant to be. <laughs> is that what it means? I think so. Ring the bell. Question two, Ashley. We took like 20 minutes and to answer that question. Before we get into question two. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We are not we medical or mental health suck professionals. We life. <laughs> Don't listen to us. You can listen to us if you want. But no, like act like... Physically listen to the podcast, but don't listen to our advice. Don't Does that make heed sense? our advice. Yes, listen to the podcast. Don't take our advice. There we go. I actually can say that. I, I can say, take the advice. Don't listen to the podcast. Boom. Whoa. Whoa. Shut her down. That did not deserve a bell. <laughs> no, it didn't. Jesus. <laughs> Most any time we ring the bell, it, it doesn't does not deserve. deserve it. Question two. I am going to school to be an artist. My parents and everyone is telling me that I need to have a backup plan. I will most likely stay in academia after school. Do I really need a backup plan? That sucks. You know, when you're going to follow your dreams mm-hmm. and follow your passions and everyone's saying, you're going to fail, so have a backup plan. Like, that's kind of sucky. Absolutely. Like, for sure. That's probably not easy to hear. I dealt with that in music school. I'm sure. You, it's all the arts, right? Yeah, and ju- arts, I'm in journalism, yes. too, even. Like, what are you going to do with that? What do you have? Do you have another? So what he meant by staying in academia after, like he's probably gonna teach art. D- yeah, it's something like that. Okay. Or pursue PhD. Or... Got it. Okay, I'm gonna talk through something here. Tell, stick, stick with me. See if this makes sense. I don't think I was really sold on being a musician. I don't think I understood what it took, and I didn't have a backup plan, or I kind of did. I was like, oh, I can always go to funeral homes, or I can always go. I have a degree. I can work. Right. But not has a family business to right. fall back on absolutely so i was thinking about this after this question came in and i realized i don't have a backup plan currently like but why would you need a backup plan like i mean just all why wouldn't you well now i'm you, worried <laughs> i don't have what if you think if you live a life and think about backup plans you're probably more likely to think you need one agree i've never thought you know what I need? I need a backup plan. And anytime anyone brings up backup plans or any any time they brought up backup plans earlier in my life, same response. I don't need that. Like if you're that if you're that sold on what you want to do, you shouldn't need one. You should just be like, this is what I'm gonna do I until agree. I do it. I agree. But I get it. If That's his hard. parents, they're for sure like just want to make sure he's financially stable in his life. I get that. Because their their argument is you can you can draw eyeballs really great, but when is anyone in the real world bills? gonna ask you to draw right. an eyeball? But again, people that aren't in the industry probably don't know how much work is out there for artists. I don't even know. Is know. there I had no intention of playing any music when I moved out to Arizona and, and you're in a freaking band. Yeah. I don't I, I don't love being in a band though. I just don't. When it's not like the music you wrote. I I think just as an adult, I just I don't enjoy it. 
I personally, if I was you, would hate it because I don't want to go out to venues I don't, every weekend. Yeah, and I don't. And play I don't in bars like, but I know that's what people in bands love doing. I just personally, as a, as me, wouldn't hate that. <laughs> I I like playing drums. I don't like listening to loud ass people, and it, I right. don't like. So, is this an option? How you could play drums in a studio for people's albums? Or the, you could, like that? but you'd have to be really good. Mm. There's a point where. You, let's say you discover you're good at something else. Like you're an artist and you're also a great accountant or you figure out that, Hey, I'm a hell of a driver or I do this thing very well. That can kind of become a dual pursuit, parallel pursuit slash yeah. backup plan. Do you I ever think. just sit there and think too, like, I honestly don't have anything I'm good at. Like I have thought this the, my whole life. Like I don't have that one thing that I'm good at. Like you are good at playing drums. You are good at editing videos. V- editing, I, I'm not good at talking. <laughs> You're good at all this stuff, and I feel like I'm literally, I don't have one thing that I'm good at. I disagree. I think there's things you do that you're just unaware of. Like what? Like you have charisma. But that's not something you could like, like you just said, have a backup as a lane of something. Mm-hmm. To- I'm, but in terms of, you have a degree, so if shit goes belly up and radio you can still go eh, pr right my degree wasn't even in pr i don't know how to do that you don't need it honestly ashley i'm gonna tell i'm gonna let you in on a secret <laughs> i have two degrees i don't need either one of them <laughs> oh yeah what we're doing now my degree zero does zero i found my degree i found my first one and it was literally on a shelf under a whole <laughs> bunch of shit. And I just was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, mine's literally tucked away in a drawer under all these papers. Isn't it weird that you spent three, four years working on that? and Thousands and thousands <laughs> and thousands of dollars. And it's just oh, shoved it's, in it's a drawer. It's fine in the drawer. It's good. I mean, where else am I going to put it? I feel like people that only put their degrees up have an office, like a doctor's office. or like, You know what I mean? Or like a president of some company. Like no one else I know displays their degree or it's like some douchey conversation point oh you went to cornell cool oh you went to asu (laughs) ashley we should get into question three wait two what are we giving we didn't even answer that wait backup plan if you feel like you need a backup plan make one if it's your passion and this is what you want to do ignore them and do you or or put off making a backup plan as long as possible right. just because you haven't made one doesn't mean you're not going to and make one don't let this second guess your choices and let you not live your life to the fullest because let, you're worried about it not working out i would venture i would almost take it the opposite direction let it shake you really? let not have it be like am i that I good like that. am i good enough to do this oh, so you thing. Have to, like, prove yourself? Yes. I see. I see. Okay. I, I can say I never think that way. I could say <laughs> t- 10 years ago, 5 years ago, my drums, I was that guy. I'd be like, "Come on, come here. I'll show you what's going on." Oh. Now, no. I hate being put on the spot and having to show my worth. Like and I hate it. Now, I'm <laughs> I am better. I'm probably a better musician now because I'm older, I'm more patient. I'm way older. <laughs> <laughs> but I I think there's there's something real valuable in understanding, w- taking inventory on where you are at any given yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, okay. I like, I listen, I listen to the podcast every week, and I am so aware of all my crutches. Oh, my God. I listen, and I cringe the entire all, time because I hate myself. <laughs> I try not to edit because I, I try not to cut too much out because I want us to be able to listen to this and say, these are the things empirically. Oh, yeah. It's, it's pretty raw. Yeah. Like, this is... N- it's great. Very raw and real. And that's why it's so cringy when I listen back and I'm like, why Why do I sound like this? But the thing I like about it is we didn't start this with a backup plan idea. We just said, you know, we're going to make this work until it works. Right? Right. Whenever that will be. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I think that that is, that's appropriate advice. Make yeah. a backup plan when you need a backup okay, plan. Okay. There you not, go. May, maybe not when you need it. Make a backup plan when you're like, Hey, life is tough. And kill it in art school. Kill it. Yeah. You just got this. Focus. If you got in, you're fine. Because obviously for art school, I feel like they have to look at your work, right? You need like a portfolio. Like they don't just accept anyone. I feel like you're probably right. I don't know what kind of artist this person Who was. Who knows? But they had to have shown their work right. and they liked it and accepted you. Yeah. So you're a good artist, dude. That is ex- extra loud this week. Is that it? That was like very ear piercing. Whoa. I'm sorry. <laughs>
Do you want me to come up with a backup plan I for the bell? it's just my <laughs> sinus, Grant. It's just... You're so delicate. I am constantly nervously biting my nails and peeling back my cuticles. I don't know why I just find myself doing it. How do I stop? I have no advice because I also bite my nails. I Check this out, Ashley. I have bitten my... I'm embarrassed by this. I'm self-conscious by this. Like, this makes me feel weird. I haven't talked to anybody about this yet, but I'm going to show you. Why? Here is my, here's my right pink, uh, middle finger. I can't see. Angle it down. Okay. It's pretty low. Okay. You've bitten that No, no, far. no. This has nothing to do with biting the nail. Look at this. This is my left hand. Do you see the end? Yeah, but what is that? A callus? I've bitten through the tip of my finger so much that it calloused over and it, like. Why do you do that? Oh my god! Now that you're doing it, I have seen you do right. that. Right, <gasps> and I just and it's have like you seen okay, me my nails? look at okay. You see how my knuckles? They watch. You see the lines? They all go like that, yeah. side side. Look at my first knuckle. Is that another callus? I bit through. I don't know. Why do you bite your skin? I understand biting the nails. I just it's I'll just to bite, sit, but why I'll just sit and chew on the tips of my knuckles. You've seen me do it. The We're literally, if you're listening, biting our nails right now. <laughs> this question is like made us it's tough. get the tick. I know Wasn't they this another question? Was it? Like a way early, early episode. And we said, hold on, hold on. We said, if you're not ready to fix it, it's probably, you, you're not going to be able to do it. Whatever advice we give you. Well, but I think. The, but then we also said. The sound. That, it takes like what? A month for something to become right. a habit. So you just need to really try hard not to do it for like a month. It, this, oh, it was a little different. But this I feel like feels we, like this person's done with biting their nails and they need help. They're, it's just such a reactive. And they got to the point where they like peel back their cuticles. Like that's so painful. Yeah. I might. I know they make stuff that you can put on the tips of your fingers like it's a polish. Yeah. And that's that, supposed to be really nasty tasting. Yeah. So it makes you not do it. Um, if you haven't tried that, do that. Gloves. I was going to say, can you just wear gloves for Mittens, a month? Yeah. Just a month. Just get used to not doing it. And do you have someone in your life, like if you have a girlfriend or a boyfriend, or you live with someone, like every time they see you do it. Hey, Jared, you're yeah. doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Or if you're money motivated, every time you catch yourself doing it, put a dollar in a jar or something. I don't know. Just like, and then someone else gets that money though. Cause then it has to be really motivated. Where or, you're like, oh, I'm really losing money because of this. Habit. Yeah. Or it should be a reward. Like, it's yeah. something you get later on, perhaps. Oh, that's good. Like, if I go a month without biting my nails, I get to finally take that trip to San Diego. <laughs> I don't know. Biting your nails is one of the most difficult things to stop doing. Mm -hmm. And I've quit doing a lot of things that are difficult to stop doing. But you can't stop biting your nails. I your cannot. Knuckles. It's it's the one thing that's yeah. just hanging on. That's funny. I mean, both of us do it. I bite my nails. But I'm not to the point where... Some people, like, they keep biting down where it's, like, half their fingernails gone. Yeah. I just bite where all the white is gone. Yeah. So once it goes to the clear part, I Otherwise just wait for it, gets, it to grow back. it gets a little sore. Yeah. So I'm not to the point where I want to put myself in physical pain, which it sounds like this person is doing because they're peeling back the skin. Or let it go for two weeks as long as you can. Then go get a manicure. Yeah, Pay for say, a manicure. If this person is a girl, what really, really helped me not bite my nails is getting um, tips put on. Right. And I stopped. Because you you realize, hey, I'm spending money on this. Right, and, and you can't really bite your nails when they, you have the acrylic on top or gel because you can't get to it. Oh, it's too bad. I bet it's fun to try, though. Yeah, I did try for a little bit, <laughs> ah. but then I stopped doing it. Oh. So if you're a girl, I mean, if you're a boy, too, get in, whatever. whatever. Get a manicure. Yeah. Just just try. Try really hard. Put your mind to it. You write, can do it. I believe write in notes. you. Write notes. I believe in you. Put a note on your desk next to your computer where you're always Stop looking. Stop biting. And don't bite your nails. Yeah. Make your... Phone, wallpaper. Yep. Don't bite your nails. Yeah. Until you're good. Yeah. And then once you're good. You can do it. I really believe you because it sounds like you're ready to stop giving yourself That's half pain. the battle. Yeah. Wow. I need to stop too because you know how much freaking germs are on your fingers? Ugh. Like I'm touching all the dials on this freaking board right now and then I put my finger in my mouth. People sneeze all over this. Like. I. And I'm putting it on my freaking face. <laughs> Why am I doing this? The first time I realized. How many germs there were everywhere? I was dating now a my nurse. My nose is really itchy, and I'm nervous to scratch it because I just have dirty fingers. Ashley's got the dirtiest fingers. This is exciting. Just watching it's Ashley pick so her nose. Bad. Like you should not put this one on YouTube, actually. Ashley, I feel like I need to clear something up from Wait, last week. Wait, did we week. get a bell for the third? Okay. I think we did, but we did anyway. I'm biting my nails. I know. Tell me to stop if you see it. Stop it.
Ashley's whole hand is in her mouth right now. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> I can see. <laughs> I, br- I brought up. I brought up last week uh, an adult film actress. Oh, oh my God! Did she message? You? No. Oh. I messaged her and said that we mentioned her on the podcast. Why and would you tell her? Be- you said you wanted her to organically. No, no, no. So check it. this out. I thought about it, and I don't. I listened to the edit of the podcast, and I feel like it may have been misconstrued that I. I don't, I'm not attracted to this woman. Yeah, that was totally misconstrued because I thought you were. No, like, (laughs) in fact, so much so. I was so self-conscious about this. I pulled up some of her work to just be like, oh, and I wasn't into it. Research. Research. Yeah. I, I think I just like her vibe. Oh, well, that's fine. Yeah, like she's pretty. She's she's You're cool. You're right. That did come across way yeah. different because I totally thought you wanted no, 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 no. to it's, bone her. No, no. Um, <laughs> you know who thinks I want to bone her? Monica, because I could not stop talking about I know, her. You really... I texted her after and I was like, I am so sorry. I totally understand if you don't want to be my friend anymore because I just embarrassed myself. I could <laughs> not stop talking about you. You probably think I'm obsessed with you and I am so... So sorry. Like I felt so bad. Can I? Can I? Can I make you feel worse? No. Okay. And Monica, take note. If you just listen to that. No. I cut about four minutes out. I told her that. I was like, Monica, you have no idea. We went through your Instagram Uh, feed. I showed Grant your pictures that I loved with you because I just love you so much. And I'm like, I'm literally making it worse right now. So uh, our obsessions. Or not, we were mislabeled as obsessive people, yeah. I think, last I was like, week. Monica, I just think you're a really cool person. I like hanging out with you. That's what I was trying to say, but it came across that I am obsessed. That's with her. exactly <laughs> what you that wanted that to say me? to Monica, is wow. what I wanted to say to Corey Chase. Wow. I'm not obsessed with you. I just. I just like hanging out with you. Yeah, I don't know you. And you feel like you would. No, I don't like even. Like her as a friend, like you would have a good time together. I just want a message. I just, that's all. I want a social media friend. I am looking for social media friends. Like somebody to be like, (laughs) hey, check this out. And, you know, just have cool little friendship that way. So me and Monica are made plans to hang out again. You guys are like real friends. So I'll update you if she's like, text me, hey, you know, something came up. I can't really hang out again this weekend. I think I saw what you guys are doing and I was thinking about just stopping stopping by. Cause I, that would be hilarious. Did you post? You posted something. Uh, we are going to the BTS movie again. On Sunday? <laughs> we have a problem. Is yeah, we're Sunday? going again. Did you see she posted yeah. about us on her story? I know. Like she shouted us out. I was like, oh, she doesn't hate me. We're blowing up. Like I thought she. she We've made it. I thought she didn't want to talk to me anymore because I was like literally. What was that um movie with Megan Fox? And Swing. she became that oh. obsessive roommate. Oh, uh, Jennifer, Jennifer's body. Yeah, I feel like she thinks that's what I'm doing. With Amanda Seyfried? Seyfried? Yeah, sure. Do you want to know how how to become a terrible person has helped me, Ashley? There are things that I do that I notice. Grit, I'm biting my nails and you didn't tell me. You just watched me do it and you didn't tell me. You know, but I'm, I'm, I'm an enabler. I'm a classic enabler, okay, I'm Ashley. I'm going to sit on my hands for the rest of the podcast. Go. What? How has it helped you? Is there a phone call? Huh? I don't know. Matt just came in and pointed. Oh, you're making oh, me you nervous. <gasps> oh. Hey, Matt Mitchell, do you have anything you'd like to say yeah. to the How to Become a Terrible Person uh, audience? This is program director to the stars, as it were. This podcast is so legendary. Actually, I'm supposed to say completely negative things, right? Oh, I know. N- uh, no. I mean, you, right. Follow your heart, Matt Mitchell. I just forgot my power cord. I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matt Mitchell. Woo! Matt Mitchell, everybody. There he is. I think that about wraps it up for the week uh, pretty solidly, you right? You know, we'll reconvene last week of how this podcast has helped us. <laughs> it's just, I need, to, I need You to need eat. to eat. Need You're to eat. wasting I'm away. I'm dwindling away. Yeah. I'm like sweating. I'm having the non-meat sweats. The non-meat sweats. <laughs> 910-557-2871. Shoot us your text, dilemmas, problems, issues, mm-hmm. anything you want to talk to mm-hmm. Ashley and I about. Mm-hmm. Gotta go.